Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Kamarchuk, and we are going to be making these really colorful shape castles today. This project is inspired by an artist. Her name is Mary Blair. Mary Blair was an American artist, animator, and designer, and she was most well known for working for Walt Disney and working on movies such as Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, and Cinderella. And then she's also known for making these really colorful castle designs based off of her set design for It's a Small World After All in um, Disney World. So we are going to be breaking down these castles into simple shapes. And a fun different way to do that is by using pieces of cardboard to kind of stamp as we go to make sure that we're getting really straight lines and we're keeping it all these simple shapes. So if you don't have cardboard or paint today to stamp, another thing you could do is trace. If you have um, square and rectangle pieces of paper that you can put down on your paper and trace around and you are almost building it up like blocks. That's another way that you can do this project today. I'm gonna show you how to be using a square and a rectangle, just a little bit smaller, um, just to build up all of your shapes like this. And I'm gonna, of course, give you as many options as possible. Now I did do my castle vertical but if you want your castle to be a little longer, you could do it horizontal. All right, so I am also gonna be using a piece of cardstock because it's a little thicker and it works a little better just because it doesn't warp and your paper doesn't start curling on you. You can use copy paper, that's always an option. Um, if you have black paint, that's also gonna work really well. I just put it on a plate so I can easily dip and just kind of stamp. So I am going to be starting my castle right in the middle, the bottom middle of my paper. No matter what kind of castle you're doing, if it's horizontal or vertical, um, or if you're using the um, pieces of paper to trace instead of stamping like I'm gonna be doing, you still wanna start in the middle. You don't need to measure, just kind of guess to see what looks like the middle to you. So I'm going to be dipping into my paint and I'm just making sure that I am getting the entire edge filled with black paint. Okay, so I'm going to start by going up from the bottom. So I've already used my cardboard today. It's a little bit more wet and warped. Um, if you don't love the lines that are a little bit wavy from the cardboard, you could just drag it instead. I want to make sure that I keep it the same size as my cardboard. So as I drag, I'm only going back and forth just a tiny little bit. I can always go over that later too. It might be easier if I go later. So the key to building this castle is think about how you would do it with building blocks. You kind of want to start from the bottom and work your way up. And I like keeping everything really even for the bottom two layers. So I'm just going to keep on making these squares on both sides, keeping it even. If you're doing it horizontal, then you'd want to make sure you add in a few extras on the sides. Mine only fits three across. I could actually go off the end and crop them if it looks like that I don't see the entire square and it looks like it goes off the edge, then that is called cropping. I'm not going to do that, but that is an option for you. All right, so now I'm just going to keep on building up the squares for my second row. And one easy thing I could do is just drag my cardboard across because I know that it's all going to be the same. And like I said, if you wanted to clean up some of those lines, you could do that over top the lines you already did. They should all match up really well. So you can feel free to drag if you like. Or if you like that kind of messy stamped look, then keep it. Okay, so I have a couple options. I could do one more row if I wanted this to be a little taller. I am going to start to make it so that the ends are a little taller like towers and then the middle is gonna stay the same. 
So I'm only going to build up the sides here, just like that. Okay. And then now I can start to think about other shapes I want to add. I could do another square on top if I wanted. I could do a rectangle on top. I could even use my smaller um, piece of cardboard if I wanted to make it a different size, if I want to make it a little shorter. There's so many options. You do not need to copy exactly what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to make triangles on top. So I just tilted my cardboard and stamped it like so. That. Okay, and then I'm going to add in some flags at the top. So I'm using my smaller cardboard. Make sure you can see that, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing, make it a triangle off the end. This time it's going sideways. Okay. So this cardboard is also helping us keep everything really even, which is good because we want our castles to be nice and strong and even. So I want to add in those designs onto each little square or any other shape that I have. So I could use either cardboard piece. I'm just going to keep on playing around here. I know for sure I'm going to need a door at the bottom. So I want some sort of shape in the middle bottom that is going to resemble a door. So I'm going to make a little line at the top and then two lines going down and then I've got a door. All right. Um, another technique that you would want to do for your castles to make it look really nice is keeping everything symmetrical. Symmetrical Symmetrical means keeping everything the same on both sides. So if I do some sort of design here, I would want to repeat it on the other side and make it totally even. So here's one idea. Could go and just turn that into four smaller squares. That's really simple since I did it there. I'm going to go ahead and do it up here. I like repeating it in the middle too. That's just me. Certainly don't have to. You can design it any way you like. Okay, another easy thing you could do is go from corner to corner. So it's just like what I did, but diagonal now. Okay, so these aren't really meant to look exactly like a real castle. If you're looking at Mary Blair's artwork, all of her castles and all of her designs are broken down into simple shapes. So they're not really meant to look exactly real. It's just meant to look like a really neat design that still resembles what it should. In this case, it's a castle. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do some smaller vertical lines. Paintbrush. And I'm keeping everything the same on both sides, as you can see. This time I'm going to switch over to my smaller rectangle. And I can add in some little design up in my tower. Being careful not to go off of the edge here. That's really easy to do. Okay, I might add one more thing just because I can while I have my smaller rectangle. Something different. Let's see. Okay, and then, ooh, that'll look neat. So see how I'm just kind of playing around and seeing what I come up with? I don't really have a set plan as I do this. I'm just kind of going and seeing what looks good. And if it doesn't look good, that's okay. It's a beautiful oops and I could always try something else over it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my castle now. So if there's anything extra that I want to add, such as maybe something to the top here, I'll take my smaller rectangle and what I want to do. Actually, I'm going to go all the way across and 
Now I have these really small spaces, so I'm taking the corner and I'm almost drawing with it. That's a way that you can get into those really, really small spaces and make sure that you don't go off of the line too much. Okay, now I'm really happy with how my castle looks. You would need to, if you were using black paint, you would need to wait for it to dry before you can move on to the next step. I already have one that is mostly dried that I'm going to just switch out. It's a little different than what I just did, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to paint inside of it. Well, let me get my finished example so you can see. I kept in mind that I wanted everything to still be symmetrical. So if I did a color over on this side, I would make sure I would repeat it over here in the same spot and make sure that it's all even and the same on both sides. So um, Mary Blair also was known for her use of color. She used tons of it on her artwork. So I wanna make sure I use every single color of the rainbow here. If you don't have paints, if you don't have watercolors, then you could just color this in with crayons or markers or whatever else you have. There's just so many options with this. And this is a really fun, bright, colorful project. So whatever kind of colors you have around your house, just see if you can add it here. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little bit here. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing because I just wanna show you a little bit of tips as I go along. So I'm just going to go in rainbow order to make sure that I hit all of my colors here. So starting with red, I'll start with red right down here. Now this is the only shape of its kind because it's right in the center. So I don't need to worry about repeating it. However, I do want more spaces that are gonna be red. And it helps to make sure that the colors are spread out all over. So maybe I add some to the top here. Since I already had red at the bottom, might be good to add it to the top. I did it over on this side. That means I'm going over here and doing it again. Now, since I have a stripe pattern up here, I am also going to paint the top stripe so it looks like I'm repeating it. And then the middle, I can do something else later. Alrighty, I'm pretty happy with my red. I can always add more red later. I'm gonna rinse my brush, wipe it on lip. Not these lips, <laughs> you know that little joke if you're in my class. Alrighty, and I'm gonna move on and go ahead and go to orange. I'll just show you a couple more and then I'll let you do the rest. So I have a lot of spaces where I did these squares. So I did over here, I'm gonna flip it and do it on the other side. Now what I like to do as well is in any of those places, those places that I kind of cut it into fourths. I like doing the ones that are diagonal from each other, the same color, and then I'll flip it and do something else those colors. So I'm going to keep on moving right along and I need to add in some yellow or somewhere. I'm going to add it right here too. Okay and I'll do one more so you can see what I do. So I did those two triangles, one color, so I'm gonna do the other opposite ones a different color. And that's how I would tackle those squares up here. And I would do the same down here. So I like repeating the same colors with the same shapes that I did. So since I did those kind of X's in the square here, I would probably do the same colors down here just to make sure that it's all consistent and stays the same. All right, so I'm gonna finish here with my finished example, because I don't think you need to see me paint this entire thing. I think you get my little tips and tricks now. So have fun creating your colorful castles, everybody. I cannot wait to see them. If you need a few more ideas, you are also welcome to check out Google and look up Mary Blair on your own and see what kinds of color combinations she comes up with and um, see what other shapes she adds to her artwork because she does a whole bunch of colors and shapes. That's what she's known for. All right, everybody, remember to tag me and share with me if you create the project today. You can email me or you can tag me on Instagram at Kamarchuk Studio. Happy creating, everyone.